In today's show, I'm looking at the action from Tuesday in the NBA. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. There's only four games for us to talk about today, so it's not going to be the longest show in the world, which is probably good after today's long-ass injury update show. But I'm going to go through some news. I'm going to talk about the four games that were on. So, warning. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Some injury updates. Chris Paul is, in fact, not playing on Wednesday. He has practiced, um, but he is out for Wednesday. So your campaign value lives on. One more game. I don't know if that what that means for Thursday, but he's not playing Wednesday. Josh the Hitman Hart is also out. That is a surprise. He set out the back-to-back on Monday. And we thought, all right, it's a back-to-back. But they are just going full-ass tanking mode. And he's just going to sit random games. That is going to make it really tough to continue to hold a lot of these guys, considering their next game is Friday, Saturday, back-to-back. So you've got one more game, probably from Josh Hart this week. Is that worth it? Can you get by this week with just one game from Josh Hart? That's a hard question to answer. You can answer that question yourself, but you've got to ask that question to yourself now that he has been ruled out for Wednesday. Ja Morant also out Wednesday, and that is absolutely troubling. It is the start of a back-to-back for the Grizzlies, so maybe it's because of that, but their back-to-back Thursday is against the Pacers. If you're going to sit him in one of those games on the back-to-back, you do it against Indiana rather than the national TV game against the Nets. Um, Memphis beat reporters are worried. Multiple of them are worried about this significantly. So that is not a great sign. It's knee soreness. Remember he had that whatever injury designation they decided to give it, knee strain or knee sprain, which they didn't actually tell it what tell us what it was earlier in the year. He's obviously been back and playing from there, but now dealing with back issues and knee issues, it is something to monitor. Tyus Jones, an excellent stream. DeAnthony Melton, a pretty good stream as well, while Morant is out. Report from James Ham, who is a Kings beat reporter, suggests that it's not for sure, but he thinks there's a good chance that we have seen Sabonis and Fox playing for the last time this season. So he reckons their season is done. This is something I echoed when I heard the news about Sabonis a day or two ago, and then again when with the Fox injury, I told you this, that I thought this might be the case. I don't know this for sure at all. I know it even less for sure than what James Ham does. But he's echoing what my thoughts are. So Davion Mitchell is a good pickup. And as I said on the What to Watch For show earlier today, you may not have caught that, but the narrative around the Kings this week is uh, two games, two-game week. But we're two games in. We're two days in. In the next four days... The Kings play two games, basically the same as almost every other team. There are three teams who play one game in that same four-game time frame, and there are five teams that play three. So every team over the next four days plays two games, basically. So the value of Davion Mitchell, Trey Lyles, Damian Jones is fine now. You didn't want to add them for Monday, Tuesday, because it's just sitting on two zeros. And you can drop them after Saturday. But now, add them. It's just like a normal week for these guys. Like the Chicago Bulls, we love their schedule for this week. They've got two games left this week now. Same as the Kings. Yes, I know it's a high volume day on Wednesday. But with the value that Mitchell and Jones might bring you with those other players out, they're probably in your best 10 players. So now is a good time to stream them in. Don't be caught with the narrative. Well, not a narrative. The fact that they had a two-game week because it's two games in five days now. In fact, it's two games in four days because they play Saturday. And that's totally fine. That's totally fine to add them. Jeremy Grant's off the injury report with his fake knee injury and Malcolm Brogdon's rest. He obviously slept enough. He's ready to go, but the pace is those tricky bastards. They've now listed Tyrese Halliburton as questionable with back soreness. Oh, what a shock that is. They limited his minutes last game and I did write that on the um, 
uh, the player comments on Basel Monster saying, hey, don't be shocked if there's some more limited minutes at times coming up for Halliburton. And we're not even getting limited minutes. We're getting questionable tags for injuries out of nowhere. So um, we're not doing anything and dropping him, of course. If he is out, Brogdon will just slide into that role. And maybe if Duarte ends up playing, which who bloody knows when he's going to play, I wouldn't bank on it at all. But maybe he could push his way into value. Probably doesn't because he really hasn't for majority of this season. So there some injury update news items that we did need to touch on. And we did touch on because that's exactly what I needed to do. I also need to tell you about Price Picks because Price Picks is daily fantasy made easy. It doesn't get much easier than this. Instead of trying to fit guys' production into their salary cap and all that sort of stuff, they give you a number. Points. And you say, oh, yes. Over that number, under that number. How easy? Or you can do it for rebounds, or you can do it for assists, or you can do it for steals. All you do is pick two to five separate players, put them together into one lineup, picking their individual player prop, go over, under, and that's it. You can win up to 10 times your entry fee, and it doesn't just have to be basketball. You can actually combine multiple sports into one entry. So whether it is looking at Jeremy Grant, 20 points over under, whatever their line is they're going to set. You could throw in another sport. If there was another sport, college basketball over under, you could throw that in there as well and mix them together. Withdrawals are safe and fast. Entries can be done in under 60 seconds as well. And we've got a special offer for you guys as well. It's a no-brainer. 50 bucks for free. If a player on your first prize picks entry scores a single point, but you must use the code NBA. That's right. It's an exclusive offer available to Locked On fans. Sign up today and use the code NBA. 50 bucks for free. If a player on your first prize picks entry scores a single point, prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. So let's go on to talk about these games now. First one, the Warriors. Really disappointing loss for them. Really, really poor to lose this game against the Magic 94 to 90. Good stuff for the Magic, although probably bad for the Magic. In in fact, both teams probably lose this one. The Warriors, of course, were without Steph. Um, They went with a lineup of Jordan Poole, Clay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, Draymond and Looney. Porter was, Otto Porter though, off the bench was great again. That's his second straight massive rebound game. 15 boards off the bench in 26 minutes with 14 points. Now, the worry you have here is that he and Clay and maybe Draymond and maybe Gary Payton even, are going to sit tomorrow. We don't know that yet. Kerr hasn't made that decision. But it's something to watch against the Miami Heat. But if Porter plays, there's stream value in him. Jordy Poole did tweak his ankle earlier in the game, but stayed in and played through it. 40 minutes, 26-2-6 with five triples. And Clay, another poor efficiency night, 15-2-3 on 40% with two steals. And Draymond came off the bench in the second half while Porter started. Didn't really impact his minutes. In fact, he played the most minutes he has since returning from the back issue. Only had two points, but you don't roster Draymond Green for points. Seven assists and two steals. You would have liked for a little bit more, but it's still fine. John Kaminga got in foul trouble. He had 14 points in 20 minutes. He's starting to play, or he's he's been playing really well over the last month or so. The minutes, I thought, might have been a bit of a squeeze, but with Steph out, maybe that opened something up for him. Um, Where he plays or how the minutes are distributed yet, I don't really know. But if you do want to take a flyer on a guy or take a stream on someone for tomorrow, maybe Kaminga's in there. Maybe it's not long until he takes over Andy Wiggins. Sorry, all-star starter Andy Wiggins, who was shit again. 13 and 8 in 36 minutes, 26% shooting, zero assists, 50% from the line. He is outside the top 110 for the season. I wouldn't drop him, but what's he doing that's good? Well, the answer is nothing. Um, Really, really disappointing. Well, Kevon Looney played 12 minutes. His minutes have been down the last two. With Draymond back, they're really reducing what he does. Um, he's only a stream option for category leagues, and he's not a 12-team league guy. I think that's uh, pretty clear. The the Magic side of things, um, Franz Wagner, 30 minutes for the big fella. No rebounds, which is curious, but 18 points, three assists, and two steals is good. While Cole Anthony only played 29 and had 14, 5, and 5. Strong numbers. Wendell Carter continues to be really good, 19 and 8. While Roderick Hampton, 28 minutes for him with Suggs out, 5 points. But he did have 5 assists. He did have 3 steals. He can be a little bit of an assist or steal streamer, but that's really low-end stuff. Chumra Kiki had 8, 5, and 4 with a triple one. Outside of the shooting, it's a good number for him. While Mo Bumba's down again, under 24 minutes. 7-7 seven and seven with two blocks on 29%. He just can't shoot at the moment. But we've seen this pattern for him so many times that now that his you know, minutes are down, he'll probably play 35 minutes a night for the next three straight and then go back to 22 a night. It's very hard to understand what the pattern is in his playing time. 
I think you still have to hold. Gaz Harris played 20 minutes, but he's not going to play each night, while Mark Elfels had 8, 1, and 2 in 19 minutes. There's no reason, I don't believe, to hold on to Mark Elfels. You know I've been saying this the whole time. He was great to have a stream option last week when they had the three quality games better than anyone else, but yeah, what's the point now? He's not a standard 12-team league guy, and you shouldn't be treating him that way and just holding on to him through the struggles and just waiting for things to happen. Like He's going to sit tomorrow as well. There's absolutely no reason to be holding on to Marco Fultz. The next game we look at is the Atlanta Hawks. They get the win at Madison Square Garden against the Knicks, 117-111. Why did I say 111 like that? 111. Trey Young was excellent, 40 minutes, 45 points with seven triples and eight assists, shot the ball well, and Bogdan Bogdanovich was almost as good. 32-4-3 and three with three steals and four triples on some elite efficiency. Bogey can be up and down with his shooting, but it was great here. The Italian cock... Hands off my cock. Yeah. Um, 30 minutes, 10 points on 11 shots. That's rough, but he had 10 boards. He had three assists. He is a 12-team league guy while Johnny Collins is out. And DeAndre Hunter didn't quite blue balls us in this one. Had just 10 points there, but added five boards and had a triple one. And Fanta Pants bounced back from his disappointment last game to have 14, 8, and 4. Also blocked two shots and hit two three. So that is, as my old friend Sheev Palpatine would say, a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. Clint Capella was apparently ill heading into this game. I don't know why they still persisted on playing him 29 minutes. You know what, Nate? You do have a capable backup. His name's Anyeka Okongwu. You could have just played him more. Um, two and six for Capella. He's been such a disappointment this season. Well, Okongwu had two and seven with a steal and a block. Okongwu is a fine stream for a day like today when there's four games on, but he's not a guy that we just need to hold through everything. Like, for example, they play tomorrow, so see you later. Uh, oh, actually, not see you later. If you do have a roster spot for him, Maybe use him, but yeah, after that, you move on. He's not a high-volume day guy is what I'm trying to say. Thanks for screwing that up, Josh. On to the um, Knicks. There was no Julius Randle, so they did start Obi Toppin. Where's my... Um, I always miss this one. Oh, there it is. I don't want to hear any more about Obi-Wan. He got into foul trouble. 24 minutes, 10 and 7. That was the makings of a pretty good game, but he's obviously only streamable if Randle's out. If you did add him for today... Hold for a little bit to see whether Randall plays tomorrow. Rowan Barrett had 30 and 13, but just horrific percentages. 36 from the field and 65 from the line on huge volume. While Alec Burks, finally some shots went down. Alec Burke. 21 points, 4 assists, 3 steals, 56% shooting. Quickly had 17 in 25 minutes. Strong game for him. He's a 12-teamer. While Evan Fournier, only 26 minutes for the disease scrotum. He'd been playing better, but this was bad. 11, 1, and 4. Still probably hold him. But it was not uh, it was not in line with some of the other good performances he has had recently. But if you want to talk good performances, my performance in smashing down built bars is top class. And I just got notification that my built bars are getting delivered tomorrow, and I could not be happier. Hopefully, that means we get to do a bit of a live unboxing on one of the shows. But they're coming tomorrow. Fingers crossed. Built bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. So instead of me reaching for a candy bar or an unhealthy treat, or instead of after I work out grabbing a disgusting protein bar. I can just get both things in one one hit here. Delicious treat, Bilt Bar. Protein Bar, Bilt Bar, because there's 17 grams of protein, 130 calories in a bar, flavors out the wazoo, unbelievably great tasting. I can't wait for my um my uh, coconuts to arrive, my raspberry to arrive. I can't remember what else I ordered. I ordered a lot. They're all going to be coming in, and I'm super pumped, and you can order them as well. So head to Locked, not Locked, head to Built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and you'll save 15% off your order of Built Bar, and you, like me, can be built different. Next game. Ah, oh, those Chicago Bulls. They cannot beat a good team, can they? In fact, they could not get close to a good team here. 126, the Bucks, 98, Chicago. The Bulls are tumbling, man. I don't know how Bulls fans feel about what's going on at the moment. Are you, are you worried? Are you concerned? It's not looking great. Levine played through. I didn't think he would play with his sore knee and being listed questionable, but he did play. He struggled with his shot, 38%, but 21, 3, and 7. Well, DeMar DeRozan had 21, 4, and 2, and a triple one, but not a single free throw attempt for DeMar. That is a surprise to be sure. And he shot poorly from the field, 44%, so not his best night. Javante Green brought defense, two steals and two blocks, but was ill, apparently, and that's why he only played 20 minutes. He's at least a stream option for like 14 teams with those defensive numbers. Well, Caruso played 30 minutes in a start, had three points, um, six assists and a steal. That's what he does, six assists and a steal. He doesn't get that every game, of course, but he's an assists and steals option that can have value for you. With um, 
Caruso starting, Dasunmu stayed on the bench, played 27 minutes, and it wasn't pretty. Seven points, one assist. Again, I would probably hold just to get one more out of him on Thursday. But after that, it is finally time to jack him off. Get that garbage out of here! Patrick Williams doesn't need to be held. Get that garbage out of here! Well, that's maybe unfair. Maybe he does need to be held. Maybe he likes the warm embrace of human touch, and he needs that to help soothe himself after an electric game of basketball. Maybe he just is a, a person whose love language is physical contact. I don't know. But you don't need to hold him onto your fantasy roster. Six points in 18 minutes. Kobe White played 23. He had five points with two steals, 20% shooting. That's disgustingly bad. And again, if it wasn't for the game Thursday, you'd absolutely be dropping him. Maybe you hold, but bloody hell, you don't really have to. Um, Tristan Thompson got into a fight, so that's cool. This bloke's useless. He's, if DeAndre Jordan didn't exist, he'd be a bloke I'd be going after more often, I reckon. And Vooch had 22-7 and seven with four triples. For the Bucks, some very interesting things here. Brooke Lopez started. He played 24 minutes. He had 10-6, and six, two blocks, and two threes. The fact that he's starting is interesting. Like, it's really interesting that he moved back to start. Now, the minutes aren't quite there. Do they ramp up over the next week to 27? Maybe. Since he returned, Brooke Lopez is the 220th ranked player. So, not great in these games. But, it's encouraging. They play on Thursday, low volume day. If you want a big man, if you want some blocks, Brook is going to help you on that day. Whether he remains a must roster guy after that, I, I doubt it. I think he's going to be on the fringes, but he's an option. As for Punch Bob, again, if it wasn't for Thursday, get that garbage out of here. Porter's had six and nine in 22 minutes. Usage down, minutes down. Hold for Thursday and then drop. Without Chris Middleton, they did decide to start Wes Matthews. He did nothing. Well, he had 11 points, let's, let's be fair. Grayson Allen had 10 in 23. Neither of them are 12-teamers. While Paddy Connaughton, absolutely on fire with his shooting. Uh, 14 points, three triples, 23 minutes. He's at least a 12-team option streaming, especially for Thursday. Like, I would have him over Grayson and over Wes at this point. Jordan Wara basically out of the rotation as Javon Carter gets the minutes. 18 for Javon. 7, 4, and 2 in that time. He's not really a fantasy option. Oh, Giannis was back, by the way. 25, 17, and 5 with 3 blocks. Yeah, his knee was all right. And Drew Holiday had 27 with 7 assists. Had a steal there as well, but shot 71 from the field, which is great. And 50% from the line, which was not great. Let's go to the last game of the night. The Nuggets beat the Clippers 127-115 is your final score there. For the Clippers, Terrence Mann, 35 minutes. It's a lot of minutes there coming off the bench for Terrence, um, which is obviously great, especially when he goes out and scores 24 points with eight rebounds and four assists. He did that on 70% shooting. So, yep, fair to say that that's not realistic to continue. The problem is that they've got one more game for the week. They play on Friday, and that's it. One game in the next five days. That is by far the worst remaining schedule of any team, and it's not ideal. And with so much uncertainty with how they produce and how they rotate guys, I don't know what to do with it. I think you probably hold, man, but if you've got a lot of ads and you need to stream blokes in, don't be afraid. Isaiah Hartenstein, more minutes than Ivica Zubats again. 24 minutes, 14, 2, and 5, 2 steals, 2 blocks. He's top 100 over the last two weeks. That's at least three games in a row that he's playing more minutes. Uh, again, if it wasn't one game left, you would add him. Bob Covington had 14 points with four threes and two blocks, including a huge block uh, of Aaron Gordon at one point. Well, Reggie Jackson had 14, three and six, and Zubat, 17 minutes, six and five. Well, we talked so much about how we can't trust Ty Lue. And go, I can probably trust Re Reggie Jackson and Zubats. Uh, no, I guess not. You can't trust Zubats. It's three low minute games in a row. Uh, drop him. There's one game left in five days. Uh, I, this uncertainty, I wouldn't hold on. Uh, Mia Coffey had six points in 19 minutes. That's nothing. While Marcus Morris had 14 in 29 minutes. And Reggie Jackson, 14, 3, and 6 on his usual poor shooting. Just the rotation, again, remains all over the place. But the Nuggets, Big Chungus, Nikola Jokic. Big, big Chungus, Big Chungus, Big Chungus. 30, 14, and 6, two steals, three blocks, just another huge game. Well, finally, we got a good one out of Aaron Gordon, 16, 7, and 6. The big stiffy only played 18 minutes, 16 points for Bones Highland, four triples and 75%. Why Monty Morris and, to a greater extent, Will Barton play over this bloke? I don't know. Barton had 10 points in 34 minutes. Morris had 15, 3, and 5 in 31. Why is Austin Rivers getting 22 minutes? I just don't get it. Look, this he's a top 100 player, Bones, over the last two weeks. 
in just 23 minutes, but the minutes are trending downwards somehow. Don't know how that's happened, but they are. The Doctor dicking us again. Jeff Green, 16 points in 26 minutes. Don't really buy into that. Hey, Will Barton, by the way. Jack Armstrong, what are we doing with Will? Get that garbage out of here! See you later. Uh, Monty Morris, you probably do hold on to, but you know we know that the upside there is uh, relatively low. Let's look at the lines of the night. The Monstrous, of course, does go to the big chungus himself, Nikola Jokic. Your waiver wire is Hartenstein. Your young gun is Franz Wagner. And your dud of the night is the very, very droppable Io Dosunmu. Top 10 players today in category leagues. At number one was Jokic, then Trey Young, Giannis, Bogdan, Terrence Mann, Kevin Herter, Isaiah Hartenstein, Drew Holiday, Otto Porter, and Alec Burks. Your top 10 players rostered in under 50%. Hartenstein, again, great numbers, one game. Otto Porter, if he plays tomorrow, I'd, I'd consider it. He's had two monster rebounding games, but I don't really trust it for him. Paddy Connaughton, great opportunity. Same with Brooke Lopez at three and four because they play on Thursday with low volume. You might want to look at them. Obi Toppin, only if Randall is out. Austin Rivers, no. Ibaka, no. Roderick Hampton, no. Nico Batum, no. And Javante Green, probably not. So there you go. Top 10 players in points leagues. Jokic, Trey, Giannis, Barrett. Bogdanovich, Man, Holiday, Aaron Gordon, Alec Burks, and Zaki Levine. And that will do it for us today, guys. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. If you are here on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.